Alright, so this video was a little bit um, uh, of a different concept that I just kind of, you know, uh, had floating around in my mind as a potentiality, and that was to kind of just go through an animation, make one, do it, and make something, you know, really, really fast to just kind of show, you know, Obviously, it's not going to have necessarily the detail fluid movement that you might have for, like, you know, the avatar animation that you have at the forefront. But just to show you, you know, kind of how quickly you can go about animating, you know, background things and how simple that can be and how, you know, ultimately that's just going to be something that, you know, um... Really just to kind of show that you don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel or bend over the barrel or do, like, a lot of, lot of work to, you know, get something that, you know, is kind of, like, you know, worthwhile um, or, you know, adds to a scene or even kind of make it, makes a scene. So I'm just going to do that real quickly in one of the things I'm doing right now is, uh, I decided, uh, we can just animate a butterfly, you know, um, and for example, that might be, like, you know, a good detail to just add some motion to the background in something outside, and that would be a really easy thing to animate and a really easy thing to kind of, like, you know, um, implicate and move around. So, here we have a butterfly, as you can see, I'm playing a bit, you know, with the kind of... I'm really using here, like, my brush sizes and properties. Um... And I'm playing a bit with the transform menu and kind of rotating around. You know, and this is just kind of to show, you know, how quickly you could make shapes, how quickly you can make an animation, and that, like, you know, I know sometimes when you think, like, oh, well, it needs this in the background, it needs, like, you know, this, um, like, you know, like, uh, as animating the fountain, I actually kept getting uh, a few different critiques on how to do that, which was good, but, um, uh, it was something I ended up, like, you know, reanimated, I believe, about, like, you know, three different times, and ultimately, the better, like, you know, it was becoming to people, it was actually getting, you know, more and more simpler, you know of a thing that I was doing, as opposed to, you know, making it more and more complicated each time, you know. It was getting much more simpler, kind of, you know, throughout the process. Here we go. And I'm just trying to make, you know, this swirl look nice. Um, just a little clean. And the way you can kind of clean up as well, like, uh, the thing about using, like, you know, um, the brush tool, like I'm using right now, is that the lines aren't always going to be super clean, but you can just, you know, kind of clean them up by pulling on them, you know, reconfiguring them a bit, and you will kind of, you know, maybe you know, be doing that and be like, what the heck am I doing? Am I making that worse? Uh, but you aren't, you know, as you can see, you know, there we got things looking, you know, perhaps just a little bit cleaner there, you know? And this is just, um, a quick thing intended to show you how quick you can do things, so I'm not going to do it perfectly. But, you know. There you go. You have your butterfly. Now you want to add, you know, some wings. 
And what do you think would be the best shape to kind of add wings or make these wings? Um, and you know, there could be a million ways to kind of do this, a million ways to, um, you know, animate a butterfly. I'm going for the way that's conducive to me, but you know, you could be, you know, sketching it out, um, uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, with background animations, um, you know, sure, you could do rough for every, you know, animation you're going to put in the background, but sometimes, you know, it's really, you know, easier for something that is a background animation for something that's a background, like, you know, walk cycle or something you're just putting in, like, you know, the background to really just go for it draw the thing, and, like, you know, in full, wait, nope, and just think, you know, okay, how can I make it move? Also, here's the thing, you know, um, when you rotate, if you've already done, like, a flip, and you start to rotate, it's gonna flip it back around, and then when it does, it's gonna be, like, you know, all up in, perhaps, like, you know, this thing you've kind of done before, so that's just something you want to be wary of if you have something that's, like, the same color, even if it was, like, you know, different shapes, it is going to connect, so just something to kind of, you know, keep in mind as you do things. Alright, and see that we're almost at, like, um, seven minutes. So, alright, let's say this is one frame of a butterfly, you know? So then we go in, you know, we want to show kind of, like, a flapping motion, so a good way to do that would be to kind of, you know, um, actually, hold on. You want to copy this, paste this kind of preserve this over here, and that's gonna be, um, like our darker orange thing kind of in the background, you know, to show, to differentiate that as another thing. So we go in our, ah! I need to move the, the gaming bar. You know, yeah, just move this in, you know, kind of, like, you know, a way to show that it's kind of folding, um... You know, down. Remember how the blushes kind of play with each other and make sure they're nice and getting along. There! Okay, now you have this animation. Um, let's make it so that there is... It's on twos. We press our F5 to add another keyframe to both of these. Um, there we go! And you have a little butterfly that's kind of flapping around. And you see, that was easy. It took less than ten minutes to make. And then, you know, if you really wanted to get into it, um, uh, you could select your kind of, um, why is it on onion skinning? I want to select multiple keyframes here. No, be on onion skin. There we go. 
so you could select, you know, all your frames, kind of drag them. You know, copy, paste your frames, you know. You select these two, you know, maybe kind of like, you know. Are dragging them. And that's the thing, like, as you continue to copy paste frames, this is just like, you know, it's a two frame cycle, but it's going to just keep, you know, kind of, uh, building up. The more you kind of are doing it, um, You know, and see, there you have it, kind of, like, you know. It's flapping and flying across the screen, and you could add more frames so that you can add, like, you know, kind of less. Um, let's see, watch me get rid of that. Copy-paste, you know. Um, And then, you know, we go into our kind of selection. By the way, the selection tool for the, um, uh, you know, grabbing of... I wonder if I could do something real quick. No. But yes, the selection tool to, um... Kinda just grab your keyframes, uh, is a bit of a pain, um, there you go, you have a whole animation of the butterfly, you know, you've made it and it's flying across the screen and that hasn't, you know, taken you very long at all and it could be something you go in the background, like, you know, you throw in, like, you know, the stage is, like, kind of a nice blue, you know, maybe it's got, you know, some kind of, uh, clouds or something going on. Those clouds look kind of a mess, but you get the point, perhaps a bit better with, there we go, that's a much better tool for making clouds, actually. Um, much better brush shape, and that's how brush shape comes into it. Yeah, but you see, um, uh, so you get the kind of point that, um, uh, when it comes to stuff going, you know, in the background in terms of animating, uh, you can make stuff that looks pretty decent and looks pretty cute and it doesn't have to be rocket science, you know? And it can just be, you know, maybe a cycle that's, like, you know, two or three frames and it's on twos and you're just kind of, like, you know, dragging it across where it needs to be.